watch you flip over your yellow learning concepts. See, there's not a lot to chapter three for us. So, I mean, we're going to do three one, three two, three three, and three four. And look at that. Two of them, 50% of our objectives come from three two. That's a lot. I can solve a system of linear equations using substitution. I can solve a system of linear equations using the elimination method. And we're actually going to go through both of those today. So rate yourself before the lesson on those. And then find page 7 in your notes. Everybody said? Alrighty. So we are obviously the objective is to solve linear systems. The difference is going to be in section 3.1. It was graphically. And I really wanted to get you into your graphing calculator and start using that. Um, you should check your Schoology comments. There were a few where it looked like the answers had just been copied out of the back of the book. I don't think for anybody in here, but um, you'll find a little note, you know, number 13 you have to show work and 62 through 69 you have to show work. But double check those just to be sure. So what we're doing is we're saying really historically the oldest way to solve systems was graphically. I mean, that's what they had to do. And that was because nobody had come along yet that knew algebra. And as soon as, as, soon as somebody came along and said, hey, wait a second, let's, let's use something, we'll call them variables, and we'll solve these, then graphing was out. Because graphing by hand, really hard to be accurate. I mean, you've got to have rulers. You have to have everything lined up perfectly. So algebraically is definitely the way to go. And I love this problem because hopefully it gets you to think a little bit about, you know, what are you going to do after school. And it says, what whole dollar amount of one day sales would make it more worthwhile to work at store B and justify your reasoning? So I look over here, and somebody's been searching for a job. And at store A, it says, and this just sounds miserable, $35 per day. You know, could it be less? But then you keep reading, and you find out they get 10% commission on all sales. So this must be a job where it's big ticket items, boats, cars, something like that, because you are supposed to make all of your money, basically. I mean, $35 isn't going to make a living off of the sales that you do. I don't know if you guys, have anybody ever been to the Wisconsin Dells? Yeah, I was just floored. I, it's a great place to go. But um, one of the things I was floored by was they don't have a minimum wage in Wisconsin. There are people that actually at the Wisconsin Dells work for free. They make all their money on tips. That's the only way they make money. So in the state of Wisconsin, they said, hey, this is a big tourist thing. Um, we won't require you to pay them anything, um, but, you know, they, they can make all of their tips and they can keep all of their tips. And so, I don't know that that's a sound way to go, but that's how they live. And this store says, well, we're going to, we'll give you a little bit to keep you coming in the door, $35, but you're going to have to sell some stuff in order to make a living. And then store B, it gets worse, $10 per day. Oh, so you come in, you don't sell a single thing, you make $10 in a day. But this one says you can get 18% commission on all of your sales. Now you're looking at these jobs and you realize I'm qualified for these, so I want to pick the one, and maybe it doesn't have to do with which one's farther away from your home or anything. I just want to pick the one that's going to pay me more. That's what I want. So I think with store A, my total is how much money I'm going to take home. So that's my why. I'm going to take $35 home, a miserable little $35. But in addition to that $35, I get to keep 10% of the sales I make. So I think, OK, percentages. You have to change that into a decimal, so that's 0 0.10. And I have to take that times whatever my sales will be, which obviously you can't know in advance. So that's another variable. So there's an equation that you could use to figure out how much you're going to make at store A. 
for store B, your total is still, hey, this is what I'm going to take home. But now it's a miserable $10 plus, and this could actually be huge depending on, like I said, is it boats, is it cars, what is it? 18% commission. So if you're really strong in sales, you've already got a job in sales and you're doing really well, you might immediately jump for the green one here. But then you remember, oh, this place is selling boats. Um, in Minnesota, you got kind of a small window for selling boats. You know, you can't take a boat out in the winter. So you mathematically want to justify your decision and it says, when is it more worthwhile, oh, let's see, to work at store B. So when would store B, the 10 plus 0.18x, when would that be greater than Thirty-five plus point one zero x. And I kept trying to think back in my memory when I was looking over the lesson last night. Um, waitresses don't have to make minimum wage, and I think, I think when I first started waitressing when I was sixteen, seventeen years old, I made two dollars and thirty-five cents an hour, plus tips. You know, that's that's what it was. So these amounts sound dreadful, but. What they really want is for you to sell their product. I mean, that's the business. That's the name of the game in sales. That's how they make their money. So this could be an actual real-life situation somewhere. Now, we're not going to go ahead and solve that, and that's because we know what we're doing at that point. What we have to do is figure out how do we get to this point. And I've mentioned this before. Good mathematicians say, well, if I did just this and this, now it'll look like something I already know how to do. So if we can get these set up, then we'll figure out what we need to do with them. And that's where we're going to start down here. So this one says the first method from our objectives was substitution. So I think about that name. It means we're going to take something and we're going to put it in for something in another one. And it says, what is the solution of this system of equations? 3x plus 4y equals 12. 2x plus y equals 10. They're flat out telling us use substitution. In the future, they might not do that. They might let us choose. So I would want to know what makes this a good substitution problem. And what makes it a good substitution problem is right there. If you have a problem that has just an x, just a y, just a negative x, or just a negative y, that's a super good substitution problem. Because what we're going to do is we're going to get this y all by itself. That's step one. Solve one of the equations for one of the variables. It can be x, it can be y, it doesn't matter. Just solve it for one of them. Get an x by itself, get a y by itself. And you've already done, completed step one of substitution. So solve one equation for one of the variables. Now I'm going to go up there and I'm going to do that. I was looking at this one because all I have to do to get y by itself is subtract 2x. Right there. Now I think about this process. Uh, graphically, what I'm still doing is finding an equation for a line, finding an equation for a line, and trying to see where they hit each other. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, I can't just use one equation at a time. If I do that, I'd have to use them both. So I have that equation solved for y, and step two would be, now put that into the other equation where it should go. And since we literally just solved that for y, we're going to replace y with negative 2x plus 10 in the equation we haven't touched yet, and the one we haven't done anything with. So substitute the expression for y in the other equation and then solve for x. I'm going to wait till you're done writing all that blah, blah, blah down. Substitute the expression for y in the other equation. Solve for x.
So we ready to Nike? Just do it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this little red baby right here and we're gonna put it right there where Y is. And we're gonna see if it's something we know how to do. So it's 3x plus 4, and now we're going to substitute in negative 2x plus 10 equals 12. Hey, I think we know how to do that. Remember, this is what math is about. Find a way to set it up so it looks like something you already know how to do, and then solve it. So we would all distribute the 4. I know we would. We're good at distributing. And we would all combine like terms over here on the left-hand side. And then we'd say, ah, I've got to subtract 40 from both sides. And we'd get negative 28. And then we'd say, oh, I have to divide by negative 5. And we would leave it as 28 fifths, because you can't reduce that. And we certainly aren't going to change it into a decimal unless it's a word problem. It's not a word problem. So I have x equals 28 fifths, and I realize I'm not done. I need the x and the y. I need both of them. So I'm not done substituting. Step three, substitute the value for x in either equation so that you can find y. Substitute the value for x in either equation. Solve for y. Substitute the value for x in either equation. Solve for y. To which I say, I'm not using either one of their equations. Because as we went through this problem, we said what y equals. It's my little red equation right here. This would be super easy to use. So I'm going to use my red equation, and I'm going to substitute in my 28 fifths for x. And at this point, if you didn't want to do anything in your head, you wouldn't have to. You could just punch that into the calculator, hit math fraction, boom, it'll give it to you. In fact, let me remind you. So at this point, you're like, ah, I did all the hard math already. Let me, let me just let the calculator do this. Negative 2, parentheses, 28 divided by 5, parentheses, plus 10. Math number 1, enter, negative 6 fifths. You could certainly do it by hand if you wanted to. You do top times top, bottom times bottom with fractions. And then we'd change 10 over 1. We have to have a common denominator, so we'd multiply the top and the bottom by 5 to 50 fifths. And of course, we're still going to get negative 6 fifths. It's up to you if you want to use the calculator to get that or not. Almost done. Super close. Because what I remember is I'm supposed to find the point, the ordered pair, where these two hit each other. I don't have that written as an ordered pair yet. I need an ordered pair. 28 fifths, because x always comes first, negative 6 fifths. Big star, box it, something that says, here's my answer. I put it all together. Here's my x, here's my y, that's where it's going to hit. And then, we should always check our answers. Not everything is going to work out beautiful. We just got a fraction here. It looks a little obnoxious. So, and I scrolled up too far. I'm going to try and find those equations again. 3 times x plus 4 times y is supposed to equal 12. And 2 times x 
plus y is supposed to equal 10. And again, for the check, I would probably just punch it into the calculator. Make sure it works. 3 parentheses, 28 divided by 5 parentheses, plus 4 parentheses, negative 6 divided by 5 parentheses. Boom. It's 12. It works. Check mark. 2 parentheses. Oh, that's supposed to be a 28. It looks like a 5. Twenty-eight fifths plus parentheses negative six fifths. Hey, it's ten. It worked. Now here's what's important. Has to work in both. Working in just one is not enough. Has to work in both. If it doesn't, we messed up. We'll have to go back and figure out where we messed up. But we definitely would want to check those. And that's because there's so many steps. We might have messed up somewhere. Got to be careful. All right, substitution. What is the solution of that system of equations? Now, I want to back up a step. Because in the homework, they, they do say, do these with substitution, do these with linear combination or elimination. Then they have a group that says, do whatever you want. Would that be a good substitution problem? Which variable could we get by itself super fast? Yeah, so this is a good one for substitution. All we do is subtract 3y from both sides. I better put that under step one. So if it's super easy to get an x or a y by itself, substitution, that's the way to go. On the test, we are going to have one that says you have to do substitution, one that says you have to do elimination or linear combination, um, and then some that you get to pick. But because it's so easy to get x alone, that's what we want to do. And I think, hey, I didn't use one of these yet. I didn't use the bottom one yet. So I have to put this in for x, because that's what this is solved for. So this is going to go right there. Does that look like something we can do? Sure does. 6y minus 10 minus 4y equals negative 5. Combine like terms. 2y minus 10 equals negative 5. Add 10. 2y equals 5. Divide by 2. Done! Score! Oh, that happens all the time. Somebody stops here. Is this done? No. So now I think, well, where's someplace super easy to put my little five halves so I can get x? Look right over here to the green one. There it is. Nice little formula. You can punch it in or you can do it in your head. x equals negative 3 times our little five halves plus 5. Again, I'll do it by hand, but you could punch it in at this point. This would be negative 15 halves plus 10 halves, which is negative 5 halves. Now, I like this problem because people accidentally write down positive 5 halves, negative 5 halves all the time. X comes before Y. Negative 5 halves, 5 halves. And again, there's the check. You know, make sure it's right. But the check is so easy because all you have to do is use your calculator to plug them in. So let me find them again. 3x, oh, wrong one. There it is. x plus 3y equals 5. And the other one, negative 2 times x minus 4y equals negative 5.
use parentheses, plug it in exactly as it is here. So parentheses for your fractions. And you're going to find, yep, or doodle. They're both good. They're both going to work. So now, another example of, hey, in real life, when would you want to be able to figure something like this out? And I like this one. Because this music store, they have an offer. They're going to say, you buy a piano here. We're going to give you a great deal on piano lessons. That's what we'll do. So a music store offers piano lessons at a discount for customers buying those new pianos. The cost for lessons and a one-time fee for materials, and I know that it's going to sound like it's a lot when we get there, but you're getting music books, CDs, software, whatever you need for all these lessons. That's shown in the advertisement. What is the cost of each lesson and the one-time fee for the materials? Oh, well, let's do it this way. Do you see a total up there somewhere? Give me one of them. 300 smackers. What did the problem say we get for our 300 smackers? Six lessons, and we don't know how much those six cost. So let's have X be the cost of the lesson. I think there was something else you had to pay for too, wasn't there? What's the other thing? That fee thing. Yeah, let's have that be Y. Anything else you had to pay for? Lessons and one-time fee? Okay. Y equals one-time fee. Okay. That wasn't too bad. What's the other total? Yikes. 480 bucks. What do you get for your $480? 12 lessons. Ooh, that's not too bad then. Do you have to pay that one-time fee? Yeah, no matter what. Does that make this a good substitution problem? Boy, does it ever, right? I mean, we can pick and choose here. So it doesn't matter which Y you solve for. I think I'm going to solve the top one. Oh, that was green, though. I better stick with green. Again, it doesn't matter which one you do. I just picked the top one as kind of the one I wanted to work with. There it is. And I realized, well, that's solved for y. And I haven't used the other equation yet. So I'm going to substitute this right here in the red one. 12x plus the quantity negative 6x plus 300 equals 480. And this one you actually wouldn't need a calculator for. At least I, last night when I was doing it, I thought, ah, we won't need a calculator for this one. Because my parentheses there aren't really doing anything but being a placeholder. So 12x plus negative 6x is 6x plus 300 equals 480. Find it for me, please. Find x for me. smackers for each one of those lessons. I am hoping for some place nice and easy up here to put that 30 and find that one time fee really quickly. Do you see it? The old circled green one, right? Y equals negative 6 times our little 30 smackers plus 300. Y equals negative 180 plus 300. And that sounds like a lot of money. But then you remember you're getting the software, you're getting the music books, you know, you're getting all the stuff you need. Now, word problems. That's the one time we don't write these as ordered pairs. The one time. Because this answered two separate questions. It wasn't a, hey, find the point where these hit each other. So we have to say each lesson costs. Which one of those was the lesson cost? 30 bucks, yeah. The 
the one time fee is what was that one time fee? 120 bucks. And that's a discount because you also bought a new piano. You know? So this is something definitely people would want to think you're going to put in the, the time to time and the cost of buying a new piano. Of course you want somebody in your house to play it. So you got to have some lessons. Do they have a good deal for lessons? Well, if you looked around, maybe this wouldn't be too bad, you know. You have to see. So let's look at this one, which is very similar, and you guys are going to do far more than um, I do in this one. An online music company offers 15 downloads for $19.75 and 40 downloads for $43.50. Each price includes the same one-time registration fee. What is the cost of each download and the registration fee? Did you see a total? Give me one of the totals you saw. Yeah. So now think backwards. What do you get for your 1975? 15 downloads. Do we know anything else about those downloads? And this time, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use D and F instead of X and Y. You don't have to. You can use X and Y as long as you remember which one is which. So D, I'm having be the cost of a download. Because everybody caught, you got to pay the fee again, right? So 15 D plus F equals 19.75. So F is the one time fee. Another total. Forty-three fifty. Whew. That's a hefty bill for your music. What do you get for forty-three fifty? Forty downloads. Now it doesn't sound so bad, right? Do you have to pay the fee? You always pay the fee, don't you? Good substitution problem? Yeah, we can get the F by itself super fast and easy. It doesn't matter which one you do it for. I'm going to go after the top one again. Now, you could write 1975 minus 15D. It makes no difference. But here comes the most important step, right? What do we do with that big green equation that I have right there? Put it in the other one for what? For F, yeah, that's why we solved it, for F. This going into my red one. And yeah, I can hear the calculators already because this is not going to be, you know, as nice as the other ones that we had. So 40 minus 15D is 25D plus $19.75 equals 43.50. Subtract the 19.75. 25D equals 23.50. Minus a quarter, 23.25. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's right. Add it, not subtract it. And divide by 25. Each download costs just under a buck, right? 95 cents? Was that all we were supposed to find? No, that's why I hear Evan's calculator clicking, because we got to put this in here. Did you get it, Evan? Yep. What's the fee? 550. 
Thank you, sir. So now, I wrote too big. I don't really have anywhere to write my, I'll write it up here. Each download costs 95 cents. The one-time fee is five dollars and fifty cents which I'm sure doesn't really sound like a big and good deal right now because most of them give you unlimited right you pay your fee and they go unlimited yeah this was when it was first starting out when they wanted to charge per download but there it is now that can't be the only method out there it could be if everybody loved fractions. Not everybody in the world loves fractions. They just don't. So along came somebody who said, well, what about problems that look like that? I mean, I could solve one of them for x or y, but as I do that, I'm going to create a bunch of fractions. And that will make it difficult for some people because they don't like fractions. And then the person said, well, what if I just did this? You notice how 4x plus negative 4x, those would cancel each other out. How about if I just add them together? 4x and negative 4x is gone. 5y equals 25. I don't suppose that works, does it? And they found out it does. So if you have opposites in either the x or the y, you eliminate one of the variables by adding them. That's why it's called elimination in this book. Most books call this linear combination because you're putting two lines together at once. Obviously, we're not done. So we've got y equals 5. How do we get the other one? Well, you have to put it back in either one of those black equations that we see up there. I like the top one because it doesn't have the negatives. And remember, most common mistake in mathematics involves negatives, so usually a good idea to stick with the one that doesn't have lots of them. And that'll be 4x plus 10 equals 9. We will subtract 10 from both sides. So 4x will equal negative 1. We will divide by 4 and get x equals negative 1 fourth. Now, I have always been the kind of person that likes to do the work up front and then have like kind of a skate at the end. So I like substitution. Because with substitution, you do all the work beforehand, and then the second one, you just plug it in and you get it. This one, look at how most of the work is on the second time. You still get the right answer. So we have negative 1 fourth and 5 as our x and y. So now we need to write down how we did this so that in the future we can recreate this. And with step one, the key step, and I, I wish they would have put a 0 0.5 in here. In fact, let's put a 0 0.5 in here. Step 0 0.5, get opposites. <clears throat> if they're not opposites, we can make them opposites because we can multiply equations by the same number all the way through, and we can make them opposites. This one was a little bit too like, here's a baby step. We want you to try this first. And then you add them. And then you solve for the remaining variable. Because by adding them and doing a quick division, you have the first variable. So you still do use substitution, but you only use it once. Whereas with the substitution method, we use it twice. Got the remaining variable. Substitute to find the other variable. And of course, check. Which I say that, and then I'm not going to check this one with you because I want us to get another one or two of these in. And I know that you know how to check it. Let's put them in for X and Y and make sure they work. So this one, like I said, still uses substitution, but it only uses it once. You get the first variable super fast and easy, but then it takes more work to get the second one. Whereas with substitution, you do more work up front, and then it's kind of an easy skate at the end to get the second one.
just waiting to make sure everybody has those little steps on there before we go on to the next one, which I see a couple people are already doing. That's okay, because I want you to feel comfortable doing this. Anybody need more time to write the steps? You feel comfortable doing that one on your own? Okay, don't look up here. Do it, do it at your seat, and then when you're done, check up here. Now, the reason I stopped where I did up here is because sometimes when this happens, people get a little weirded out. Because they're like, doesn't a zero usually mean something weird is happening? We're not done yet. Just keep doing the math. Divide both sides by negative 8. Zero divided by anything is zero. Check your answer if it concerns you. You know, put them in. This one would be super fast to check. In fact, I'll write this one down so you can see. Negative 2 times 4 plus 8 times 0 equals negative 8. Well, of course it does, because 0 times 8 is 0. And 5 times 4 minus 8 times 0 equals 20. Same thing. Of course it does. 8 times 0 is 0. So far, so good. Now comes trouble. What do we do if we don't have opposites? Well, there's two rules in math. The first one is there's no crying in math, and the second one is we never give up. So, start thinking. Well, I need opposites. That's not opposite, and that's not opposite. Maybe I could make them opposites. I mean, if I multiplied this one by 2, that would become a 6u. And if I multiplied this one by 3, that would be a negative 6u. 6u, negative 6u, that'll work. If I go over to the v's, even easier. If I just multiply one of these by a negative 1, I'm going to have opposites. Either one will work. I'm going to take the easier one. I'm going to multiply, multiply this bottom one by negative 1. Already has two negatives. If I multiply it by a negative, it'll be down to one. So I'm leaving the top one alone. I like that one. But the bottom one, I'm going to change all the signs because that's what happens when you multiply by a negative one. Well, this is going to go super duper quick to get the first one. 5u equals 20, divide by 5. And u equals 4. Beautiful. But like I talked about before, getting the second one, it takes a little more work. And I would probably put that up in the top equation since that one doesn't have as many negatives. So 3 times our little 4 plus 3v equals 15. And again, we know how to do that math. Piece of cake, right? And then we get to this point, and this is usually when the homework, when the hands go up, if we have time in class for homework. See, Jerome, that's not an X and a Y. 
Isn't it always supposed to be x comma y? Well, they don't have to be, but they do have to be in alphabetical order. So if they change variables on us, just make sure that you keep them in alphabetical order. Sometimes you have to go, but you will come before V. And there it is. So in the book, I don't know why, for some reason, they just like to go to M and N and stuff like that all of a sudden. Don't let it bug you. Just remember alphabetical order, and you'll be perfectly fine. Well, we learned both methods today, substitution and elimination. And so that means you need a little bit of homework on this stuff to lock it in the old memory. So there it is. And like I talked about before, this is so much more accurate than graphing. And we can understand those algebra steps as we go through there. So it just it makes logical sense. And my hope is, by going this long today, thank you so much, by the way. You really hung in there, and you were doing fabulous at the end, doing those on your own as I walked around. Um, my hope is that tomorrow I'll be able to finish this up with a short video with the other group and then give them their test back. And then you guys, the next day, we'll start 3-3, three, three, and you'll get your test back. Went very well overall, very, very well. Um, I think I had on a list at one point out of my three classes around... 18 people that had 95% or better on this one. So it went very, very well.